Do I think that I know everything? Well, it might seem like that sometimes. Because, you know, uh, most of the time I'm talking about a subject that I know very well. That is borderline personality disorder and emotional health in general and authentic recovery. And because I'm talking about that subject so much, rather than going off into conversations about other things that I... I do not know, uh, it might seem like I think that I know everything. But let me assure you that I, I don't think that I know everything. In fact, uh, I was uh, thinking about this today as I was just reading, uh, researching, exploring things online. Uh, often, I mean more times than I can count, I, I'm sitting reading something in amazement at the intellect being shown by the person that I'm reading, the insight and the uh, the knowledge about things that, uh, you know, uh, the, the internet sometimes can make you feel very small, can't it? I think to myself, how, how does this person have so much knowledge about this thing? Or how does this person write so well? Or how does this person speak so intelligently? And uh, I feel about that small. So I'm probably no different than many of you in that um, in that regard. So I just uh, I just kind of want to put that to rest. I don't I don't feel like I know everything. I don't think I know everything. I know I don't know everything. You, you, what I'm feeling inside of me many times is. My goodness, I'm way outmatched here when talking about anything that does not have to do with emotional health. There are a few other things, you know, that I, I feel like I'm an expert in. Translation and interpretation of the Spanish, from Spanish to English and English to Spanish. I feel like I'm an expert in that. Do I feel like I know everything about it? No, I don't feel like I know everything about it. I just know that uh, very infrequently do I come across people, even, even other translators and interpreters, who I feel truly understand the subtleties, the subtle art of all that is required with translation, interpretation. You know, I had 16 years doing that. The woods, survival in the woods, woodcraft, I feel like I have a, a vastly superior experience there and knowledge than m most anybody. In fact, there's there's some people that I follow on YouTube and that sort of thing, just to see what they're doing as far as survival and woodcraft goes and stuff like that. And um, they and I'm not impressed most of the time. I'm not impressed because the things they're showing off are not practical. They look amazing on a on a YouTube video, but if you're in a survival situation, n none of it would be practical. It, you would not use that. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Because when you're starving and you have to hike 10 miles that day, you're not going to have the energy to stop and build some elaborate fort. You're just not going to. Doing that sort of thing will kill you within two weeks. You know, because you're just burning calories that you don't have. Uh, likewise, a lot of these survival guys, they show you how to trap animals and hunt animals and stuff like that. You're not going to be doing that in a survival situation. You're just not. You don't have the calories for it. So the way to survive in a survival situation is to get used to eating bugs, uh, worms, grubs, anything you can catch. You know, The idea is to expend the, the least amount of energy and get the most returns back for the least amount of energy ex, uh, expended. So you know, the idea of going around and building 50 traps or chasing down a wild boar is ridiculous. There is an area where I feel like my knowledge and, and direct experience has given me knowledge, wisdom, and insight above many people. Do I think I know everything there is to know about woodcraft and survival and stuff? No, I don't. Not at all. That's, uh, that's why I still enjoy watching some of these things, because I just like to see what these guys are doing and it gives me ideas. I take what I can use and I discard the rest. 
But, you know, if I get onto a topic of like science or technical things like that, literature, uh, even poetry, I'm not an expert in poetry, even though I love poetry. Uh, I can't tell you, I can't recite any poems. I can't, uh, if you uh, quoted a poem to me, I couldn't probably tell you who wrote it unless it's just some one that I happen to be familiar with. So uh, there's just a lot of things left to learn. And um, and I just don't, I just don't want you folks to think that, um, that I th- I'm a big, that I think I'm a big know-it-all. I really don't. And m- in many occasions, I get around people who are so brilliant that I, I feel about that tall because I just think, wow, I'm in the company of some really, really uh, skilled or great people here. But I'll tell you what the secret is for me. Um, and this is just a regular diet for me, speaking of diets. The secret for me is that, number one, I have been blessed to have spent very intimate and long durations of time with very smart and insightful people. For me, insight is number one. Uh, without You can have all the knowledge in the world without insight. It really don't matter. Th- that knowledge is not going to do much good without insight. So Dave Salvage, my Cherokee mentor, he was just a very compassionate and brilliant person. Now, he didn't have a lot of knowledge about you know, the technicalities of science or anything like that, but about life, he had tremendous wisdom and insight. And I think that that's uh, really where my strengths are, is being insightful as far regarding life. Um, and, and it's not all credit to me. Dave, there's another friend of mine, uh, his name's John, and I just found out he's like 87 years old. I, can't, I couldn't believe it. I didn't know he was that old. Um, but John, growing up, was actually a friend of my, my dad's. But he's somebody that I just I look to, and he's just full of wisdom. And, uh, and other people like that, that's who I choose to spend my time with because I want that to rub off on me. And it has. A lot of it has. Now, again, that there's an area of life uh, that I don't feel like I know everything about. So what do I feel like I know the most about? emotional health and authentic recovery. There's one thing where nobody, I'm not going to get into a conversation with anybody about emotional health and authentic recovery and feel like uh, like they're going to tell me something I don't know because of my circumstances, you know, being somebody that lived with borderline personality disorder for um, the majority of my life and then having to authentically recover from that over the course of seven years, understanding the disorder from a person who, you know, lived with it completely ignorantly, completely unaware that he had it. I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten what that was like. I remember exactly what my feelings were back then, the my behaviors, why I thought I was behaving that way. Then I remember perfectly the experience of authentically ridding myself of that, shedding off that skin and getting free from that, which was a very long process. And now, of course, I can look back and I can view the whole thing as a person now free from that disorder. So remember, I had access to the same sources of information and books and stuff that you folks do. And I had to, in order to recover, I had to look at the most popular teachings on the subject and discredit 90% of it in order to authentically recover myself. So that's one area where, you know, it's not opinion. When I'm sharing things with people about that subject, I'm not sharing my opinion. I'm sharing just the reality. I'm sharing the reality with you. But, you know, my point there is that in everything, I have some doubts and there's things I don't understand or have not learned yet about that thing. And that's not true with borderline personality disorder. Emotional health, emotional unhealth, and authentic recovery. All right, well, I'm going I'm windy tonight. Let me tell you how my diet's going. First of all, I'm having my nightly tea. And tonight I'm not drinking green tea. You've seen my dandelion wine. Here's my dandelion tea. So that's what I'm having tonight. 
dandelion tea. It's not bad. By the way, I don't put any sweetener in my tea. I don't even put, you know, like artificial sweetener or anything like that. I just drink it like the uh, Chinese do. And I picked that up uh, when I was in my 20s and I was learning Mandarin. I, got, I told some Indians about that not too long ago and that's how I learned to love tea without sweetener because that's how they drink it. And they thought I was weird for asking for sweetener. What else? Okay. Here's one thing I've noticed. Day two of my diet. Moody. A little uh, feeling out of sorts. Feeling a little grumpy. Grumpy is the, ter is the word. So that's one effect that I'm noticing today. Diet went fine. I had uh, what did I have for breakfast. I had a shake, a protein shake for breakfast. For lunch, I had meat. For supper, I had a a soup, like a chicken broth soup with some sausage in it, and um, my cheese snack. So I'm feeling good, just to keep you up to date on my diet, how I'm doing. Uh, but that's that's the thing I'm noticing today. I'm a little grumpy. Just to kind of give you an idea, guys, an idea of what you can expect if you're planning on doing this diet with me. I, f I feel uh, a little grumpy today. Uh, and I think it's because of the cut in my calories and salt and that sort of thing. I want to tell you that I am taking vitamins every day. That was another thing that I'm doing for my diet that I didn't mention. So I'm taking a multivitamin. I'm taking ginseng, I'm both American ginseng and uh, Asian ginseng. And let me tell you, I, there, there are a lot of supplements. I don't know if they work. Ginseng works. And uh, <laughs> I won't go into too much detail about that. But after just uh, four or five days of taking ginseng regular, regularly, it, it starts to work. To give you an idea, it's kind of like Viagra. It's kind of like natural Viagra. Uh, not that I need it, but goodness, it... Uh, once it starts to work, I get in a mood, and I am just constantly in that mood. It makes me feel like I'm 20 again. So, a couple of nice subjects there. Brought you up to date on my diet. I did get in my I did get in my walk with Orson. I probably didn't need to do the walk after all the activity I did, but I went ahead and did it anyway because uh, I didn't want to stray from the plan. So, hope you guys are all having a wonderful week. Hope you don't mind these slightly longer orange slices. They will go back down to five minutes after this diet gets uh, firmly established. Before I go, uh, this message is specifically for you folks who are watching this video on YouTube. Uh, I wanted to tell you that uh, these videos, which I call orange slices, are not intended for YouTube. Uh, they appear typically appear exclusively on, on The Last Symptoms official premier social media community, which is on the Locals platform. That's L-O-C-A-L-S. You can find it by going to thelastsymptom.locals.com. It's that simple. You just go in your browser. And I got a killer moth attacking me right now. Uh, another way that you can do it is you can just go to the uh, App Store and download the locals.com app and search the last symptom. We'd love to have you over there. We, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a Facebook groups kind of environment where we, we talk, uh, these videos appear daily and give us something to uh, think about and talk about. Um, it's better than Facebook, it's better than YouTube because I don't have to worry about people uh, saying what you're saying is wrong and we're not gonna let you say it. So I would encourage you to join us over there on Locals. I think you'll have a good time once you get the hang of it. So I wanna extend a, an official invitation to you tonight or today or this morning or whenever you're watching this, that if you would like to see uh, the continuation of this video series, please join us over at thelastsymptom.locals.com or go to the app store, download the locals.com app and search for The Last Symptom. It'll be nice to have you there.